Skull Mountain at Six Flags Great Adventure is an interesting indoor roller coaster. Built by Intamin, this ride has an impressive facade and a shockingly good first drop. But is there anything else to this ride? Find out in this review of Skull Mountain. Under the ownership of Time Warner, Six Flags started placing more emphasis on theming. Well, as much as Six Flags would. And Skull Mountain would be the most ambitious ride yet at Great Adventure in terms of theming. Opening in 1996, Skull Mountain was themed to riders exploring an ominous mountain where others had previously vanished. It was a simple theme and backstory, more reminiscent of an Indiana Jones adventure, but the thematic choices Six Flags made really helped sell it. It all started with the facade. In many ways, the facade may be more impressive than the ride itself. The show building is adorned with fake rock work, with the focal point being the giant, menacing skull atop the building. There's just something about its appearance that looks really unnerving. And ever since 2015, the waterfall effect that comes out of the skull's eyes and mouth has worked reliably. It is a dazzling visual. This was actually one of two rides Six Flags ever named Skull Mountain. The other was the now defunct and problematic flume at Six Flags America that operated from 1997 to 2011. There is one ride still operating in the Six Flags chain with a similar theme though and that would be Runaway Mountain at Six Flags Over Texas. Also opening in 1996, this coaster is a similar expedition theme. The only difference in terms of the theming is that Runaway Mountain is missing the distinctive skull. The queue line for Skull Mountain also reinforces the idea you're on an expedition with the bamboo paths and lantern lit caves. While it's not on the level of Disney, this is about as much as you can reasonably expect from a regional park like Six Flags and it does set the mood for the ride, especially when you hear the howling in the cave. The one downside is that the ride recently had some advertising for tackies added, which sort of detracted from the semi-immersive expedition theme built up in the queue line. Skull Mountain was built by Intamin, and the coaster's stats are not all that impressive. It's just 40 and a half feet tall, or 12 meters tall, with a top speed of 33 miles per hour, or 53 kilometers per hour, with a total track length of 1,377 feet, or 420 meters. That firmly makes Skull Mountain a family coaster, despite the rather dark theme. And in most ways, it rides like a family coaster. But there is one notable exception. The first drop is no joke on Skull Mountain. If, and this is a big if, you're in the back car. You do not want to ride Skull Mountain anywhere else. Despite the ride's modest height, the trains are surprisingly long. They're longer than that of most wood coasters. Each train has 7 cars, seeing a maximum of 28 riders per cycle. So the back gets absolutely whipped over the drop because the front is pretty much already at the bottom before the back even crests the top of the lift hill. This results in a very surprising pop of ejector airtime. And this airtime is made even better by the restraints. Skull Mountain has no seatbelts just a shared lap bar for the entire row. So if you're riding with a larger guest, the smaller guest will get absolutely catapulted out of their seat. I can't believe an airtime moment this strong exists on a supposed family coaster, but I guess Intamin just couldn't help themselves. But what does Skull Mountain offer beyond that first drop? Sadly, not much. The biggest problem with Skull Mountain as a coaster is the lack of speed and the poor pacing. Because of the awkwardly long trains for a coaster of this scale, the train speed undulates wildly as it traverses elements, and I wouldn't quite say that's a good thing. The second drop is rather jerky, but it does have some moderate force in the back car. The middle section of the ride offers nothing in terms of forces or thrills, but the final helix, which is extremely tight, usually offers some decent positive Gs. In terms of theming and visuals during the ride, there is barely anything to look at. The ride starts with a small lift out of the station and a partially exposed turn behind the waterfall. This reinforces the cave theme established in the queue line, but that theme quickly disappears once you enter the main show building. The main show building is essentially a giant, empty warehouse with barely anything to look at. And unfortunately, it isn't pitch black either. Usually there's some light that bleeds into the building, so you can sort of anticipate the upcoming elements, 
which does take away some of the thrill of an indoor coaster like this. The one thing you have to look at is this funky looking skull adjacent to the brake run with multicolored pinwheel eyes. It is a downright creepy image, especially because the ride is usually blasting heavy metal music. These elements feel more like they belong in a rave than a cave expedition like the queue line built up. So as you can probably tell, this ride has some real pacing issues, but thankfully the ride is very smooth as you'd expect from an Intamin roller coaster. While Skull Mountain is a flawed ride, it is one I usually ride each visit. One, it usually has a much shorter line than the park's other roller coasters. The consistent two train operations and simple restraints keep the line moving. Two, it's indoors so it's a good option if a thunderstorm is in the area. You may also think that a Skull Mountain would be a wise choice during holiday in the park to escape the cold, but that actually isn't the case. Six Flags makes no effort to temperature control the ride's show building, so it gets downright frigid in there. If you ride Skull Mountain on a cold day, the ride absolutely crawls and it comes darn close to valleying. When Skull Mountain runs like this, that aforementioned final helix has absolutely no force and you're just thankful to get back to the brake run. So what would I rate Skull Mountain? I would give this indoor odd coaster a 5 out of 10. Skull Mountain earned almost all these points for that gorgeous exterior and the wild pop of airtime in the back row on the first drop. In any other seat, Skull Mountain is a forgettable, plodding mess. It's a shame the theme that's established in the queue line is not carried over better into the ride. But that's the reality with Skull Mountain. You go from a cave to a rave in a matter of seconds. Earlier in this review, I mentioned Skull Mountain's sister ride in Runaway Mountain. While Skull Mountain has the best overall moment in that first drop, Runaway Mountain is the better overall ride. Runaway Mountain is a premier ride's knockoff of the Italian Windstorm layout, and it maintains its speed better start to finish, which makes the overall ride experience more exciting. It really is a shame that Skull Mountain's pacing is so subpar, because Intamin has proven they can make a well-paced family coaster. One of the best examples I can think of is Mine Train Olven at Bakken. This ride has a similarly awesome first drop in the back row, but that coaster is a much more exciting layout, hugging the ground through a series of tight turns. While Skull Mountain is a flawed ride, that first drop in comical execution does make it worth experiencing in a trip to great adventure. And if you have younger guests with you, this is a good starter coaster because the ride experience is much tamer than the ride's creepy exterior may suggest. So those are my thoughts on Skull Mountain, the indoor roller coaster at Six Flags Grey Adventure. Have you ridden Skull Mountain? What are your thoughts on this unbalanced coaster? I would love to hear your thoughts down in the comments. If you enjoyed this review, I'd appreciate if you gave this video a like and you considered subscribing because there'll be a lot more roller coaster and Muse Park videos here at Canopy Coaster. Thanks for watching.